Hi, good afternoon, good morning. Thank you for joining this session today. Uh, welcome, welcome. I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, we will give it a couple more minutes just to allow any um, participants to join this session. Uh, thank you again for joining. And I really look forward to share with you, sharing with you some fantastic information about Herzing University and helping you prepare for your trip to the USA. Um, we will wait just probably another 10, 15 seconds longer see how many more students will be joining this session today on Herzing University and our pre-departure session. So again, thank you for joining and we look forward to sharing some more information with you. I will just give it a couple more seconds, see if anyone else will join. I think we've had a couple of people rejoin. Okay, perfect. So, Good afternoon and good morning. Uh, my name is James Vigas. I'm the Director of Recruitment for the USA at InUni Global. Uh, I'm pleased to be joined here by my colleague Anissa Neal, the Director of International Op In Admissions and Operations for Herzing University. Today we'll be sharing with you information on joining Herzing University and critical information that you need to know before you travel to the US. I know some students may already be in the US already. Uh, if you are, this will still be great information for you to find out a little bit more about Herzing, the uh, institution and what you should expect from your time in the USA. But again, thank you so much for joining us today. And Anissa, thank you so much for being here today. It's a real pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Excellent. So just to kind of give everyone a bit of an opportunity, um, the format today, we will do obviously a short presentation. And at the end of the presentation, we will answer any questions you have. Um, there is a Q&A function um, to this session today. So if you have any questions, feel free to post your questions in the Q&A box, or if not, feel free to post them in the chat. And what we'll do is we will open up this session at the end. Um, so if anyone has any questions, they can also ask those directly to myself or Anissa. But again, thank you for joining us today and we look forward to sharing some information with you. So Anissa, on Atlanta, obviously, I know this is a fantastic location for our students and really housing in Atlanta is in really the heart of Atlanta. So perhaps you can give me a little bit more information about the location, the attractions, things students can do on and off the campus, to kind of give them a little bit of an excitement about joining and visiting the US very soon. Yeah, absolutely. So Atlanta is located in the southeastern part of the United States. Um, we're really lucky that we get to experience four seasons here, so the weather is relatively mild. Um, our summers get pretty pretty hot, probably similar to many of your own home countries. Um, and then we do definitely have a winter season, but it's pretty short and quick. And then we have a really, really nice spring and summer. Um, and so the, the weather is really one of the greatest attractions here in Atlanta. Um, but also in the city itself, we have lots of museums and uh artifacts and history and cultural activities that you'll find. Um, lots of really exciting things to see. Also, we actually take you guys on some field trips to some of these places during the first semester that you're here with us. Um, but some of those places include, um, as you see here on your screen, the Atlanta Botanical Gardens, the Atlanta History Center, the Coca-Cola Museum, which we will actually visit as a group. Uh, Fernbank is a really cool place. They always have lots of different displays, the Georgia Aquarium, Stone Mountain, and Zoo Atlanta. Again, several of those that we will uh, visit as part of your um, onboarding here. Also lots of sports teams here. So Atlanta has a basketball team, a baseball team. Um, we have a football team, a soccer team. Well, you guys probably all call it football, but we call it soccer, but you know, you'll know, you learn when you get here to the US, but lots of uh, professional league teams, lots of parks and really nice places. And then the campus itself is actually located right downtown. Um, and it's in the middle of everything. And so there's lots of restaurants and um, just all types of different things, parks, really cool places to go and see. Um, so lots of really nice things around the campus and always something to do. You will never be bored in the city of Atlanta. Excellent. It sounds very exciting. Unfortunately, I haven't had the chance to visit the campus, but I definitely need to make sure to come down and perhaps I can join you on a few of these um, attractions. I would love to go to the Coca-Cola Museum. It sounds super interesting and fun. Absolutely. Anytime. And just as Anissa mentioned, so this is where 
Atlanta is um, on the map of the USA. So as you can see, very close to the, the south um, southeast corner. So like Anissa mentioned, you'll be getting to enjoy all of the, the seasons and really it's a great location for students to study. Now, Anissa, you obviously mentioned a little bit about the campus. We obviously have some photos here. Perhaps you can kind of give us a, a little bit of an overview of what we're seeing and the sort of different departments students will get to, to access during their time. Yeah, sure. So um, these pictures are just so you can kind of get a feel for what the campus looks like, but it's, it's a very modern campus. Um, and so lots of bright, vibrant colors, lots of nice artwork and things around the campus. Um, really nice uh, marble floors and uh, just a just a really modern campus that we have. Um, the classrooms are usually one of two types, well, three types really. So um, we have like lecture-based classrooms, which are mostly just flat top desks. Um, and then we have computer classrooms, which are similar to the one in the bottom corner or the very bottom in the center that you see there where each student in the classroom would be assigned to a computer, um, especially our IT students may have classes like that. Um, and then we also have some labs if you have a science on campus. So that's the third classroom type that we would have. And then um, we do have like a some library resources, but one of the things that you'll find here in the US is it's not customary anymore for universities to have big libraries. Um, most all of the, uh, resources are online and all of you will have access to so many online library resources when you become a student with us. Um, but because we do have a, a law program that's approved by the American Bar Association, and then we have some other programs that do require hardback resources, we do have some spaces for actual textbooks. But what was previously our library, we have really shifted and turned into study spaces for students to just have comfortable spaces to sit in groups with their friends or sit on their own and study. Um, lots of laptop connections, as most of our students do uh, bring laptops with them when they're students. Um, yeah, so I think I think that about says it. Fantastic. I, I think you, the, the campus looks super modern, as you mentioned. I, I really like the I'm possible as well. It's a it's a great motto. And Anissa, I know you wanted to take a moment to, to congratulate any students that have already received their visas um, or are about to take their visa appointments and just kind of share a little bit of your yours and hers in excitement for them to, to join your student community in a, a, hers in Atlanta. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, first and foremost, congratulations on your admission to Herzing. I know that that's uh, a really big task in of itself just to begin applying to U.S. universities. It takes a lot of courage to, um, you know, get ready and know that you're going to be leaving your family for a bit to come to the to the U.S. to a foreign country and study. So we're really excited to have you. We're excited that you've been accepted. We're excited to hear about the visa approvals and congratulations to everyone who's already been approved. I actually just scrolled through all the participants here. I recognize so many names. I'm so happy to see you. Some of you have had visas for a while. Some of you recently have had visas. And I see a couple of you that have just recently emailed me and told me about your visa interview that's gonna be in the next uh, couple of weeks over the holiday season. So um, we're really excited about um, the prospect of you guys coming here to Atlanta and joining us. And um, I'll tell you, you're, you're going to face some challenges as you go through, but if you're brave enough to apply to a foreign university, you're brave enough to go there to the embassy and request a visa, I'm confident that you'll be able to handle the challenges that come up as you travel to the United States, um, as you get situated and settled. And, um, you know, we really look forward to, to having you here with us. Very well said. And I think obviously as an institution, I know the housing team is very supportive and you know, you've got a um, fantastic team like yourself that will always be there to support students with any questions and hence this session today. Um, and this, obviously there's really three categories that we look at for any students, the information and documents that they, they need before a visa interview. So I know we have some students here, what they need to provide, um, what they need after a visa interview and effectively what they need at that very last stage just before they travel. So perhaps you can kind of give us a bit of an overview of documents, information, what is relative to each sort of group of students and you know any areas that you see often students maybe forget about that is kind of critical to their success in these times. Yeah, absolutely. This is a lot of words here, but I'm gonna try to, um to shrink it down and, and make it as easy to, to comprehend as possible. So 
Again, I mentioned I did see lots of you still have visa interviews yet to come in the next couple of weeks. Um, and so the important things to do, as it says here, is check your I-20 and your acceptance letter for errors. Um, make sure your name is spelled correctly. Make sure your date of birth is correct. Um, be sure to have paid your I-901 SEVIS fee and obviously your DS-160 fee prior to having gone, uh, going to your visa interview. I will say too, those fees do usually take a couple of days to sync up. So I would recommend paying them at least two to three days prior to your interview. Um, if you have recently received an I-20, you should definitely look to schedule your visa interview right away. If there are slots open, you should take advantage. Um, we, as all of you know, it is sometimes quite difficult to come into actually getting an interview scheduled because there are so few and far between in some cases. Um, as soon as you guys do schedule an interview, if you haven't notified us already, if you could please let us know of that interview date. Um, and then also you want to make sure that you check in to get all of the immunizations that are recommended by your home country for traveling to the United States. Herzing University does not require immunizations exactly. Um, and at this time, there's no COVID vaccine requirement to show, but you should always check your travel requirements before you leave because they do change uh, quite regularly. Um, also, um, before your visa interview, do go online to the website. Make sure you know a lot of details about Herzing University. That interviewer is really going to be making sure that they feel that you are connected to Herzing. They are going to want to make sure that you know something about Herzing that you didn't just regurgitate straight from our website. Like, is there something on there that really connects you, makes you feel comfortable, that's really important to you? Those are the things that that visa interviewer is going to be looking for. Um, and then um, after your visa interview, you're gonna wanna make sure that you notify us of the interview. And, and obviously if you were approved or denied, we are really close into crunch time right now and it's the holiday season here in the US. And so it's gonna take an extra day or two than longer than usual for us to get your schedule done. Also to get your invoice out to you so that you can go ahead and take care of that prior to your departure from your home country. And then also um, getting ready to schedule your travel, um, and book your flights and everything here to the U.S. Um, and when you do that also, we would like for you to notify the university of that just so that we can keep track of your flights and that we know um, kind of if your flight's canceled or we can follow along with that because sometimes I know it can be difficult for you to communicate back to us during the time that you're traveling. So sharing all that information to us is really important. And then also I did want to add right here, um, you know, many of you, uh, if you are just now in the process or about to have your visa interview, the last date of arrival into the U.S. is going to be the 14th of January, um, and that is so that you can attend classes by January the 15th. So classes start on the 8th, actually, but as long as you're in class by the 15th, we will be able to allow you to continue to start for this, this intake. If you're any later than that, we will need to have to push you to the next intake, and you will not be able to stay in the USA during that time. So if you have any direct questions about that, if you can just reach out to us after the webinar so that we can make sure that we're all clear and we don't have any uh, challenges with that. Um, also, I, I mentioned already about taking care of your tuition payment. Um, the, the last date for tuition payments has actually already passed unless you haven't um, had your visa interview and been approved yet. But as soon as you do get your visa and it's approved, you'll need to be making sure you're making your tuition payment right away. And then also um, be sure that you've arranged your accommodation. I know many of you have uh, family or friends that are already here in the U.S. that you plan to stay with. But if you're looking for outside accommodations, um, you can reach out to us for that, too. Happy to send you lots of recommendations. We have longer term uh, housing recommendations. We also have short term housing recommendations for those that may want to come into the city you know, see the city a little bit, get used to it, meet some people and make a decision on where they would like to live from there. So, um, you know, any range of accommodations, we have those available to share with you. And it, it will be up to you to make sure you arrange those accommodations on your own. Um, and then as you're getting ready to travel, um, I'll say one of the biggest challenges sometimes that students have is they get here and they don't realize that you know, they can't just instantly transfer money to the U.S. right away from their family. So it's going to take you a little time to get here and get settled. Um, you'll have to actually open a U.S. bank account. And depending on what country you're from, it could make it a challenge uh, for your family to be able to transfer money to you and having to have extra documentation. 
Um, some governments require a lot of information for you to be able to transfer money. And so we want to make sure that you have access to the financial resources that you need. I personally recommend around six to 10,000 US dollars, and it can be in whatever currency you like. You'll have the opportunity to exchange that currency either at the airport before you depart here once you get into the US. Um, or even at a bank once you get here. Um, I will say, if you are traveling with this amount of cash, be very careful with it, keep it on you. Um, don't flash it around, don't let people see it while you're walking through the airport. Um, you know, in, in any country, you definitely don't want someone to see that you have that amount of cash on you. Um, but keeping that, keeping financial resources on you as opposed to traveling with very little funds is gonna be important, especially when you get ready to arrange your housing accommodations. Most housing accommodations are going to require you to put down a deposit and a first month's rent. Um, and then also you may have to uh, put down deposits for utilities like electricity or water, depending on where you select your accommodations. And so we just want you to have the right resources so that you can pick the right accommodations. And I did want to um, say this as well. Um, recently, we've had a lot of students traveling with these. I'm not sure what type of card it is, but it's a type of prepaid um, bank card sort of that is like an international card. And I will say a lot of students have had a lot of issues using those in the U.S. Um, those cards actually have quite a lot of, of limitations on what you can use them for. So I will say that I do not recommend those cards. I personally do recommend having the cash well, um, just because it's going to be easier for you to use. But then also getting it into a bank as soon as you get here to the U.S. because you don't want to keep that amount of cash on you all the time. So, um, but a lot of students have had a lot of trouble with those prepaid banking cards. So um, there are some packing recommendations that I believe in uni has probably already sent to you. And if not, we'll be sure to get those sent out to you. But making sure that you bring um, all of the things that you need, especially for the first couple of weeks. So right now, for example, in the U.S., it, it's a little chilly out, um, you do probably need to bring a coat. Um, but then as far as like your day-to-day -day things, I only recommend bringing like small, like travel size bottles for like soap and shampoo and things that you would do for self-care. Um, those are items that are very inexpensive. You can purchase those when you get here. I would spend, take up a lot of valuable luggage space, uh, filling your luggage with those items. Um, I would mostly fill your luggage with clothing that you want. Again, I would bring a coat, um, shoes. An maybe, adapter um, perhaps for your charger. That's often one yeah, I think absolutely. students forget. Yeah, an adapter for your, you know, our plugs, our outlets, our electrical outlets in the U.S. are going to be different than what you have. So having one of those is going to be a, a really good idea. Um, oh, I just, I had something else I was just thinking of and I've lost it. Oh, oh maybe a blanket or a sheet or a pillow for bedding, you might want to bring those things with you. Um, one that, you know, you can make really small in your luggage, but those kind of things are going to be really important. I wouldn't, again, take up valuable luggage space with things that are inexpensive that you can purchase here, you know, after you've been here for a couple of weeks and gotten settled. Um, and then also be sure when you're traveling, you take your phone charger with you, um, because you're going to find you're on your phone a lot, like traveling and riding on an airplane for, you know, most of you will be traveling for at least 24 hours. You're going to want to have access to that. Um, also, make sure you have your passport and your I-20 in your carry-on luggage. You want to make sure that you don't pack that in the checked baggage as you're going to need that whenever you come through the customs. Um, Would and it I, be I recommended to, to bring their proof of payment as well for the tuition deposit? I know that not herzing necessarily, but other institutions have seen students deported because they won't be at, they weren't able to produce that at the point of entry. Yeah, that's a really good point, James. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, sometimes if you are questioned, um, at secondary, they will sometimes ask you for additional proof. So having your acceptance letter, showing that you also showing that you have already paid your tuition. And those of you who have paid your tuition already, you would have received a receipt from Flywire. So you could just take that with you to show them that you've already taken care of that. Um, you know, students do sometimes get taken into secondary questioning, which is just, you know, I don't even know how they pick who they take into secondary questioning. Um, in most cases, I've not ever had any issues. I can honestly say I've only ever had one true issue with a student coming through secondary and that student was not on the right track. He did not truly intend to come to the U.S. and study. And so um, 
and other than that, we never had any issues with students coming through, you know, even if they take you to secondary, don't panic, um, you know, just wait, hear what they have to say. If you have my WhatsApp, feel free to reach out and ask me any questions. Um, and we'll make sure that, that we get you through. If they call me, which if they have concerns, they will call me. Um, I'll make sure to answer the questions and have all the information I need, which is also a really good reason for you to be sure you send me your travel itinerary because that's the first question they're going to ask me is, actually, it's the second, is the student accepted for the January intake? And the second question is going to be, did you know that they were traveling today? So if you um, have your travel itinerary, please go ahead and pass that along to us so that we can be sure that we are very knowledgeable when they uh, ask those questions. And then lastly, um, we will be having new student orientation on January the 4th. Um, that is so close. I can't believe we're already almost to the, the orientation. You will all be receiving an email um, about the orientation date and time. Um, it will be on the campus, so it'll be your first time to be present there. And I, I will also add that between now and that date, um, it's the holiday season here in the U.S. And so unfortunately, there's not really going to be anyone at the campus. So if you arrive prior to that date, you know, don't go to the campus. There's not going to be anyone there really to help you. Um, but all of you should have our contact information here between in uni and myself. Um, and we'll make sure that we answer any questions that we can and get you the help that you need if you have questions about something. Fantastic. Thank you, Anissa. Um, and you did mention on housing options, there's short stay and longer stay options. Um, and obviously, housing, Atlanta as a location is a real hub for international students. So this is kind of a well-trodden path and there's a lot of providers already available. Uh, is there anywhere in particular that they should go to to find this information? Is it on the housing website? I know that we have some links I think you've shared with us before. Um, is there anywhere they can find this information quite easy on accommodation options in the local area? Yeah, so um, there's not any directly on the website. However, you know, if you shoot me an email, I'll make sure to get it over to you and get you the information. Um, and so there are a couple of options. There's, I mean, there are an unlimited amount of options, really. So because Atlanta has so many universities and so many international students, there are student housing options that don't necessarily belong to any particular university. And so if you were to just hop online and look up student housing in Atlanta, you'll find lots of options there. Um, however, I do make sure that you use one of the ones that's recommended by the university. We have spoken to and worked with a lot of these guys, and so we know which ones are easier to work with versus the ones that may be more difficult to work with. And so um, my favorite university housing option is going to be called Westmar Law. Um, they are the easiest to work with. They have great accommodations. They're beautiful places. They're very updated and modern, and they are also um, on the lower end of the cost. Um, they also have a shuttle that comes and takes students directly from uh, the Westmore housing option to and drops you off right there at the university. Um, but then also while you're a student here, you're going to learn a lot about the uh, transportation options that we have in the city. We do have public transportation, um, a bus, a train, lots of ways to get around. Um, but then even in addition to those uh, shared university housing options, which are set up very dormitory style, we also have shorter stay options, which is, is what honestly most students select, um, which is where you can stay in a, like a shorter stay hotel. Um, and I, I do have one that is a partner with us that will also give you guys a discount because you're coming to stay with Herzing University. Um, if you come and stay in one of those options for maybe 10 days while you get a feel of the city, um, maybe look around. A lot of guys actually come in, they meet other new students and they're like, hey, you know, this guy's actually from the same city as me. We just didn't know each other, but we know a lot of the same people. Um, and so they're able to find roommates that way. Um, but we would share all of that information with you. Um, if Just request it and we'll send it right over. Um, and I'll also make sure that everyone in uni has it just in case someone uh, requests that while I'm out of the office. And, and as I did mention, I am going to be out of the office, but I'm going to be checking in every day. So if you send me an email, if I don't respond right away, I should respond within the next 24 hours. Fantastic. Thank you, Anissa. And anyone on this session, as Anissa mentioned, feel free to reach out to us, free, feel free to reach out to the in-uni team or Herzing directly. You should have received a lot of emails from both sides. So I'm sure you know the best points of contact if you need any support with your accommodation um, while in Atlanta. And I know, obviously, students uh, are there to study, but all work and no play wouldn't be that exciting. So perhaps you can kind of give us a, a little bit of an overview of um, of, of these, this slide for me. 
Yeah, absolutely. So as I mentioned, my favorite is the, the Westmar loft. And so that just happens to be where we've uh, given some pictures up here. Also, I will say there's another one called Yugo Atlanta Summer Hill. They're a very close contender for second place. So those are two places I definitely recommend students check out. But as I said, these are shared student housing options. And so what it is, um, you kind of walk into a unit and there's either four or six bedrooms. You would have your own bedroom, but you would share a common space with other roommates. So that common space being a kitchen, a living area, um, kind of a sitting area. And then a lot of the units also have washers and dryers inside the unit. Um, but they have so many things, like not even pictured here. They have a beautiful swimming pool if you like to hang out and swim. They've got a great uh, gym if you're really into working out. Um, you can see in the bottom right-hand side here, this is a track that is actually on top of a parking deck. And you can see the whole Atlanta City skyline here. Um, also, uh, just above that, there is a game room. Pictured here is just a pool table but they have spaces with huge big screen TVs that if you brought your like gaming console with you, you can go plug it up and you can play video games with your friends. Um, you can see there in the top in the center, there's some vending machines, but they have so many vending machines. They have like a, in the US we have this uh, shop called CVS, which is like a pharmacy. And so CVS um, has this like vending machine that is as big as the wall. It is the, it's it's crazy to see. They have so many things in there that um, you can purchase that are things that students just often need. Like, oh, I left my phone charger somewhere. So let me grab this other one and, and get it right here. Or, oh, you know, some snacks. Or maybe if you have a headache or a cold and you needed some medication, you can get all of that out of the machine. Um, so lots of really cool, convenient things here at Westmore Lofts. Um, in the bottom left, that's actually the shuttle that takes students back and forth. And then you can also see there the outside of the building. Um, and then the top right, top left hand side there is just kind of a sitting area. And they have lots of these sitting areas all over. So um, it's a really, really nice facility. And I will say all of the student housing options have uh, similar amenities to the Westmar. Um, but since Westmar is the one that is my favorite, that's why we have those photos here today. The, the photos look fantastic. I, I do like to play pool myself. And I, I think you know, it must be great for students from around the world coming to these types of locations, um, these types of properties i'm sure there's going to be opportunities to meet students not just from herzing but also other universities as well yes absolutely and obviously speaking about accommodation i think here we have some estimated costs um on you know housing meal plans perhaps you can just break it down a little bit further for us yeah sure so um your each of you should have an I-20 at this point already. And if you take a look at your I-20, you'll see on there your estimated tuition expenses and then also estimated living expenses. Now, I will say, you know, those living expenses are, you know, kind of middle of the road living expenses. And so if you are someone who needs to live in the fanciest apartment and eat really fancy food every night, you are going to exceed those living expenses. Uh, the expenses we shared are kind of normal uh, living expenses for standard living, kind of just a, a regular apartment, regular eating, lots of cooking at home, occasionally eating out sort of thing. And so you should expect that you're gonna spend between 750 to $1,000 per month on whatever housing accommodation that you select. So. Um, you know, make sure that you're you're knowledgeable about that and prepared for that. And that's going to be per person. Um, food, you should expect to spend between four and six hundred dollars per month. Uh, transportation is between one to five hundred dollars per month. And that's going to be depending on whether you're taking public transportation on the end of the 100 or if you purchase a vehicle, that's going to be around 500 because you'd have to have car insurance, gasoline, um, you know, and obviously the car itself. And then other expenses between one and $500 a month. And that one's going to vary, right? So the first month that you're here, you're probably going to max that out. You know, you're going to need to purchase some things. You could only come over here with two 75 pound luggages. And so you're going to want to make sure that, you know, when you get here, you're going to need to purchase things like we talked about. So, um, you know, toiletries and things like that for self care, um, maybe additional clothes or shoes that you weren't able to pack with you whenever you came. And then also, when it gets summer, it's gonna get really hot here. And so if you traveled with all winter clothes, you're probably gonna to need to purchase some summer clothes when you get here. So these things are gonna fluctuate and vary from month to month, but we do want you to be prepared, particularly for the housing. Um, accommodation and living in the United States is 
more expensive than a lot of places that um, a lot of other countries. And so we do definitely want you guys to be prepared to know that you're not surprised when someone tells you that the rent in a location is $900 per month. And so, and, and that's for one single person. Um, so just be prepared for that. Make sure that you've spoken to your families about it. And again, that's also part of why we recommend that you travel um, with the right amount of cash so that you can be prepared for that when you arrive. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, and obviously, uh, as, as we kind of mentioned earlier on, I know a lot of students have already either started to travel or planning their travels. I, I think maybe the first point on this is slightly redundant as we've already kind of passed the, the 30 days um, before the, um, the the official start of the program. But with regards to orientation, I know that you've already mentioned that. Is there anything else students should really take in um, before they, they plan their travel dates if they haven't already booked it? Yeah, so again, just making sure that um, one, when you get here to the to the US that you know where you're going. So when you get to the airport, you need to have something set up. If either a short term accommodation, long term accommodation, if you're staying with a family or a uh, family member or friend for a few days until you get settled, uh, make sure that you know where you go, you're going. You don't want to come into the US and not have a plan. Um, also, um, as it mentions here, be sure to print and sign your I-20 before you travel. You should have already printed and signed it. If you went for your visa interview, you can just take that exact same I-20 with you. Um, and then you see on here, it says never travel later than the uh, start date listed on your I-20. This is very true, but if you are traveling, you should request, because again, some of you have a, a late visa interview. If, if you scheduled your visa interview and it was approved in plenty of time to be here prior to the start date, that's the never travel on or later than the I-20 start date. If you're just now going in for your visa interview on the 26th of December, like I know a lot of you are, we also have quite a few on the 3rd of January. If you're one of those and your visa is approved, please reach out to me and let me give you a letter that tells the, the customs agent when you're traveling. Yes, we know that, uh, James got his visa. Yes, we know that James is going to be traveling and we have made accommodations for James to be able to join um, and experience no delays in his education. And then that will help you to get through the customs without them having to call me. If for some reason you don't get the letter in time, um, you can still travel. Um, they just may stop you, take you to secondary and call me, which is, is not a big deal, but it definitely takes a lot of time. And if for some reason I'm not available, um, I would hate for you to miss a connecting flight if you landed somewhere else and we're coming to Atlanta. So getting that letter is going to be key. Yeah, I think having traveled to and from the US and India, often you guys are going to be jet lagged. It's going to be a very long trip. So make sure these are very quickly and easily accessible in your hand luggage. You know where they are because it, it yeah. makes life a lot easier if you're not fumbling around trying to find these documents um and also obviously you know it may be difficult to find them on your phone you may get to an airport and potentially not be able to connect straight away um having speaking from experience sometimes i can't always get onto the 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 um, airport internet straight away as well so make sure you have them printed i know we live in a very digital world where it's very easy to kind of find them on your phone however if you have them in your emails and you haven't saved it to your device it may be difficult to find them. So again, having these printed off before you travel can make life a lot easier as well for you. Yeah, and I'll add to, to that, when you're traveling, um, you know, many of you have, I, I, I did some interviews with you guys or I watched the interviews. And so I know that many of you have never been on an airplane before. Many of you have never been out of your home country before. Um, you're gonna have so much adrenaline when you're traveling. It's gonna be hard for you to even sleep because your excitement is gonna be like exuding from your body. It's gonna be so exciting. Um, but when you get to the US, it's gonna be the same. Like you're gonna get here, you're gonna be so excited. You're just gonna be like pumped and ready to go forward. And then about 12 hours after you've been here, you are really gonna crash and you're gonna be so exhausted and start to experience some jet lag. So, you know, as James said, knowing where all of those things are and preparing for that in advance is going to be really important. And it's going to help your experience ahead of time, if that makes sense. Thank you very much. And obviously, from the airport to your accommodation, there are a number of options for students to book, whether it's taxis, cabs. Uh, Atlanta does it use Uber and sort of other online 
um, company. So I, I know Uber is very well known in India and sort of globally. So if you do yeah. have Uber already on your phone, you can use that to get you from um, the, the airport to your accommodation. So that's very convenient. You can put the address in. It's nice and quick. But there are other transportation options. Is there any other recommendations you would suggest? I, I'm assuming students should use the official tran uh, transportation at the airport and not any form of sort of unlicensed taxi. Yeah, so I will say um, if you have Uber or even if you don't, I recommend you download it and go ahead and connect your uh, form of payment inside the system. Um, Uber is definitely the most uh, reliable way to travel. Um, when you get out of the airport and you go to the ground transportation or ride share, you're going to walk out the door and there are going to be a lot of people right there saying, do you need a taxi? Do you need a taxi? Do you need a taxi? You have to be really careful. And I'll, I'll warn you all now as you're coming into the United States as, as tourists, essentially, um, and you're not a tourist, you're going to be here for a, a quite a long period of time. But for the first few months, you're going to seem like a tourist. You're going to seem like um, you know, you don't really know exactly where you're going. You're a little unsure of what decision to make. And we actually have a, a program as part of your orientation that that's kind of what I call it is to make you feel like a tourist for as short amount of time as possible. And so when someone sees um, a, a tourist, there are obviously in every country, people out there that are unsavory and not the best people in the world that are looking to capitalize on someone that doesn't know what they're doing. And so a lot of these taxi cab drivers are out there. Hey, do you need a, do you need a taxi? Do you need a taxi? If you decide to go with one of those, you need to be sure before you get in their car that you know exactly how much you're going to pay them and that you know, they know exactly where you are taking, they are taking you. Um, because we have had some situations in the past and I, I say situations, it's only been one. Um, but we have did have one student in the past that got scammed by a taxi driver. Um, and then also his luggage was in the back of the guy's car, right? And so it was in the trunk. He couldn't access it. Um, and the student felt very stuck. And so that is why I recommend Uber. Uber is tracked electronically on your phone. Anybody from Uber knows where you are. You can even share your location and the driver that you've gotten in the car with with somebody on Uber. And chances are that nothing is going to happen. I've, but with Uber, it is it is so much safer. I'm comfortable traveling in an Uber by myself in any country um, and you should feel the same. And so that's why I do recommend Uber. There's other options out there too. There's one called Lyft. Um, yep. It's L-Y-F-T, I believe. Um, I particularly use Uber because it's just mostly uh, available, but there is Lyft out there as well. And I would recommend them over any other uh, taxi driver accommodation. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, and then obviously one of the key things you've already kind of mentioned on traveling to the US, as you said, this is kind of a, a colder period um, for the United States. So please do make sure you pack a coat. I know some from the, the warmer climates, perhaps you haven't already had that. Having recently traveled to the US from the UK, I do I can tell you, uh, and from Hyderabad to the UK, I can tell you it is a lot colder. So make sure you pack something warm. Um, obviously make sure you take your laptop and make sure you bring um your laptop charge or any any sort of um basic items that you'll need for the first few days as anissa mentioned you can go to the cvs is the walmarts and get you know more of these products once you get there so you know don't overpack on you know shampoo and shampoos and sort of shower gels just bring enough i, I think most people can't you can't travel with more than 100 milliliters anyway it'll be taken away from you at the airport but just definitely bring enough for the first few days obviously and this it does mention about medicine here perhaps you can give a, a little bit of an overview about prescriptions and how to deal with those situations absolutely and i was thinking this earlier when we were talking about packing and i completely forgot so you guys have this on the slide so yeah, medication. You do want to make sure that you bring medication with you. I recommend bringing at least 30 days of your medication with you. If you have more available um, that's already been prescribed to you, you can feel free to bring that. You do need to make sure that you bring it in the, the actual uh, bottle or container that was issued to you by the doctor or the pharmacy that's got your name on it, the name of the drug on it. Um, you want to make sure that you bring that with you. And, and it's in those labeled bottles, because if it gets checked by TSA, they're going to check it. They're going to see that this is your name and your passport. They're going to want to see, you know, that the name on the outside of the bottle matches what the pills or the medication should actually look like. 
Obviously, do not travel with medication that belongs to someone else. You can actually be arrested for that, so make sure it's all your own medication. Um, and then once you get here in the U.S., it'll give you at least 30 days to find a physician if you need to get that medication refilled. Um, if you have medical records that you would want to get from your current physician that talks about the diagnoses that you've already had, um, any tests that have, have done, um, you know, if you have kind of some of the more uh, common uh, ailments like high blood pressure or high cholesterol, that's something that they're going to check regularly anyway. Um, but if you have some that are maybe a little harder to see, you know, with a quick blood test or something like that, you may want to bring some test results with you just so that you can share them with the new physician and they don't have to run so many more tests. They can look at the test that the doctor that you have already seen did or any letter from your physician or anything like that to explain your illness um, could be helpful. Also, um, academic documents. Um, many of you have been already admitted with an unofficial evaluation. And if that is you, um, you will need to bring your official transcripts and certificates with you when you arrive to the U.S. Um, and if you're not sure if that is you, you should bring them anyway. Um, you're you're going to find that you're going to need them at some point anyway, and so it's going to be a really good idea for you to have them. Just make sure you have them in a you know protected area, in an envelope or something where they're not going to get all scattered and torn or anything like that. Um, but those of you who were admitted on unofficial uh, transcripts, you're going to need to submit your officials at orientation. Um, that's the deadline for you to get those submitted to us if you haven't done so already. So be sure that you have those and that they're available. And that's going to include um, your degree certificate, um, all your semester-wise mark sheets. And if you have a consolidated transcript, you can bring that as well. Um, and then it talks about bringing an extra pair of glasses or contacts. And another, if you wear contacts, that's something else that um, I know everybody's contact prescriptions are different. Like some people wear contacts for 30 days and then throw them out. My husband has contacts that he changes every day, like a new set every single day. So I guess it depends on the kind of contacts that you have. So um, making sure that you have that prescription with you as well may be important if you're wearing contacts. And then obviously that extra pair of glasses in case you misplace them. Um, and then also dental or medical records, we talked about that already. And Im immunization records uh, could be important to avoid any kind of duplicate titer testing or uh, immunization testing. And as James mentioned, adapters for electronics, um, they are, you know, definitely for you to get through the first few weeks or so here in the U.S. I, I do recommend that you eventually buy the correct laptop cable and buy the correct telephone charger, as sometimes these adapters do can cause problems for your devices if you use them long term. Um, but you definitely want to bring one at least to, to get started while you get settled. Excellent. Thank you very much. And I think obviously we kind of already touched upon this, but one of the most important things is to plan ahead. Um, and as you kind of already mentioned, it's vital to have enough cash uh, on you, on your person when you arrive to make sure that you have um, the ability to you know, pay for accommodation, pay for sort of basic living and amenities. Um, with regards to obviously acquiring dollars, it can be done in your home country before you travel or once you get to the US as well, depending on whether you can get a good exchange rate. And there are, as this slide mentions, ATMs at the airport. Again, as Anissa mentioned, you know, please make sure that when you travel with cash that you do take extra precautions not to have that cash out openly um you know it, it's the same in any part of the world uh, there's places in Hyderabad where you wouldn't want to be uh you know showing off a lot of money same in the US you know you want to make sure that you're keeping that concealed and not at a place where um you know people are, are seeing that so please take extra caution um, as it mentions here there are charges for the ATMs um but if there's any other questions about that you can speak to myself to the team as well we can advise you on what to um, prepare as you plan ahead and I, I think this obviously just touches on a little bit more about the the services that um herzing does offer to students i know there is a great deal of support for students not just on the herzing side but on our side to so make sure the student's journey to the usa is um, managed and taken care of as much as possible. Is there anything else that you'd like to touch on that Herzing does offers to students um, with regards to support? Yeah, so you guys are going to get um, access to all of this support immediately as soon as you arrive here in the U.S. And then you're going to learn a lot about the support as we go through our international student seminar over the first eight weeks of your study. 
um, you will meet with me and our Atlanta campus DSO. His name is Jim. Um, you'll meet with us once a week and we will teach you all of these things to help you get settled and make you feel more comfortable and at ease while you study here in the U.S. Um, there's so many things right now that, you know, you guys don't even know to ask. And so we want to make sure that we arm you with all of those tools to make sure you have everything you need. The student services, the academic coach, the tutoring and uh, writing center with the library services that we talked about earlier. Um, you know, our registrar's office, all of our international services. Career development is going to be really important for a lot of you guys. Um, most all of you are going to want to participate in OPT and CPT after you so that you can work um, at the end of your program and after you graduate. And our uh, career development uh, director, she's very exciting. She's going to be really happy to meet you all. And when she introduces herself, you will never forget her. So she really loves to come in and meet international students and tell you how uh, she looks forward to helping you update your resume and make it look more US friendly and help you search for jobs and uh, things like that when the time comes. Obviously, you know, it has to be part of your program. So when it's time for you to be able to look for a job, we want to be sure to help you with that. So tons of services, um, you know, we, we can't wait to introduce them all to you. Fantastic. Thank you, Anissa. So that wraps up the, the presentation um, part of the session. I, I do see that we have some questions um, in the Q&A box. So what we'll do is uh, we'll open up the floor to any questions that anyone has. Um, so as I mentioned, obviously there is a Q&A function. Please feel free to post anything that you would like to discuss there. If not, we do have the chat function as well. Feel free to drop any messages that you do have. Uh, and this, so let me go through some of these questions. So. The, the first question that we have is with regards to visa slots, uh, one of the students appears to not have received the visa slot yet. Um, what extensions are available? I think you kind of mentioned that already. The latest students will be able to join the January intake is January 14th. We do have a summer intake as well. So whilst obviously it's frustrating, I think a lot of students have had to face this, um, in this for this January intake. There is an intake just around the corner. And this will perhaps you can just kind of give us an overview about that. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, it is unfortunate. The visa slots are very dismal in some cases. And so, um, especially depending on what country you're coming from, uh, India is particularly rough. Nepal, Bangladesh actually are even worse than India, if you can believe it, for getting an interview slot. So, um, you know, unfortunately, a lot of students have to defer more than one intake. Most students are not able to get an interview slot in time the first time that they apply. Um, so, you know, I would say January 3rd is probably the absolute last date that you could go for a visa interview. Um, and the reason for that is we need you to be in the U.S. by the 14th of January in order to be able to start classes. So um, once you go for your interview, if you're approved, it takes you about a week to get your passport back. Um, and then once you get your passport, then you can travel. So you can go ahead and book your travel, but you can't actually travel until you get your passport back in your possession. So um, you know, unfortunately, you know, deferment is often part of the process, um, but we will start to work through I-20 deferments really soon. Um, so if you'll work with your local uh, in uni Herzing University representative there that you worked with to apply initially, um, they will help you through the application deferment process. And we will start processing those deferments very soon. Um, probably in the next, I'd say three weeks, we'll start processing those deferments. But you can use the I-20 you have now to schedule the interview. So what you really need to schedule that interview is that uh, CVIS ID. And as long as you use that CVIS ID to fill out your DS-160 and to pay your CVIS fee, um, your CVIS ID will not change whenever we defer your I-20. So you can go ahead and get that interview scheduled. Don't wait on the deferred I-20. Like, let's go ahead and get it booked. Um, and then uh, we'll make sure that you have your I-20 prior to your interview. Fantastic. Thank you, Anissa. Uh, we have another question of a, a similar description. So uh, we have Samir, who's also mentioned that he has a visa interview on the 23rd of January. Uh, Samir, as Anissa mentioned, obviously, the, the last official start date is um, January 14th. What we can, what you can do is, obviously, you can defer to the next available intake, which would be, I, I assume, would be made depending on what program you are looking to study. And based on that, we can work with Anissa and her team to make sure you get an updated I-20. So that way you can attend your interview for this intake and join at the next available start. Unfortunately, January 23rd will be too late. 
Um, perhaps you can have a look on the embassy website, see if there's any slots available slightly sooner for up until the 3rd of January to see if there is a possibility to join sooner. If not, as I mentioned, we would need to defer you because you would have missed too many classes at that point. And unfortunately, that would put you back very severely. So we will um, move on. Um, Looking at one of the next questions we have is with regards to a student looking to transfer to housing. Um, Broken has asked, I have received a F1 visa for United, but I'm planning to take a transfer to housing. Please can you let me know um, the transfer process, the deadline. Uh, I also, I have already sent my visa photo to your admin team. I'm assuming that's in uni and says um, I-20 should be resolved soon. And I think there's often a misconception about what is required for a student to transfer their service from one university to another. And this, so perhaps you can touch upon that. Yeah, so um, I am looking here right now and I'm looking particularly at your record. And I will say, if you will reach out to me or to the NUNI team rather, um, there's one really quick thing we need you to take care of before we can get your I-20 out to you. Um, but if you're planning to transfer, you actually don't need an I-20 from me. Um, my recommendation would be, there's there's two ways to do this really. So you can travel in the U.S. on the I-20 that you already have. And when you get into the U.S., you can transfer your CVS record to Herzing, which is quite frankly the easiest way to do it. Um, if you'd like to take the route, that's a little harder. You can also um, be admitted to Herzing. We can issue you an I-20. You can transfer your CVS fee from your current I-20 to your new I-20 and then travel in on that I-20. My recommendation is the, the first way that I say it, you can do it the other way. Students do it all the time. It just makes them feel better to enter the US on the I-20 that they're going to be studying on and not have to go through the transfer process. Um, and so it's totally up to you. And now that I'm saying it out loud and knowing it's over the Christmas holiday, the transfer process from one university to the other may take a little bit of time as well, only because it is the holidays, lots of universities are gonna already be closed. So um, if I have your, um, if you could drop your email in the chat here, if you don't mind, or you can send it to me directly, you should have that option as well. Um, I'll make sure to touch base with you and make sure that we get this uh, handled straight away so that you can get everything that you need and then we can communicate about what's gonna be best for you. And I think one of the, the best analogies I've I heard about transfers is often the misconception is that, you know, you need your I-20 as quickly as possible. Your I-20 and your visa is kind of the key to getting into the US. What is critical is that you maintain your service and you have your service record updated. So when you come into the US, as Anissa said, probably the easiest way is travel to the US first, because I know sometimes students are a bit nervous about have enrolling at a different university to the one that they have on their visa. Arrive in the US first, you need to request from your current university's DSO that their service, your service details are transferred to Herzing. Those are the critical items. Get in an updated I-20. It, it won't change anything at this point. It's really making sure that you have those first steps. But myself, Anissa, um, I believe you may be working with Archana. Um, we will make sure that you have all the support you need with your transfer. And as Anissa mentioned, what we can do is we can make sure that um, we have all of your records completed so that you have plenty of time to complete that transfer. Yeah, and the, the university you're traveling in on, they cannot deny you the, the transfer. Um, if you request a transfer, they have to allow you to transfer. And as long as your CVS record is in good standing at that time, and you're going to be starting at the school that you are transferring to within 30 days of your arrival in the US, they can't deny the transfer, so. Excellent, thank you, Anissa. Um, we have a question here with regards to internships for the Bachelor of Science in IT, um, STEM course, how uh, does this work as the visa is four plus one year, is OPT and CPT available? Yeah, so um, the Bachelor of Science in Information Technology is a STEM program. And so what that means is um, you can apply for OPT, which standard OPT is one year, and then you can also apply for STEM extension to your OPT, which is an additional two years of allowable work uh, in the USA for a total of three after your graduation. Um, as far as CPT, there is a CPT option available in the final semester of your uh, program. Um, 
It runs for one full semester and it's an internship that can be paid or unpaid and allows you to get some work experience before you actually go uh, out into the job market uh, looking for full-time employment on OPT. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, the next question I have is, does all the MBA students get the capstone project towards the end of their course? Yes, it's actually the very last semester and you either take the capstone or you take an internship. So all of our programs have an option to do an internship. And as part of the MBA program, if you do an internship, you don't actually take the capstone course. So it's one or the other. Um, everyone's automatically scheduled for the capstone. And then if you get an internship, then we would change your schedule to that internship course and remove the capstone from the program. Fantastic, thank you very much. Uh, Mohid um, has a question here. I've received my login credentials yesterday and waiting for an I-20 so I can book my visa slot at the earliest possible date. Uh, I don't know if you know this student. If not, what we can do is we can take your details, Mohid, and obviously reach out to Anissa and her team to, to double check where you are within that process. I do know the student right here. You are uh, you got a good friend in Charleston here, uh, convinced <laughs> me yesterday to go ahead and push your application through and that you would be working very hard to book a visa interview before the date. Um, and so I'm waiting on acceptance notification for you. We just submitted your documents and everything uh, to the, like the registrar's office. So um, even though I'm the one who does the final review, I'm not the one who actually admits you. And so I'm waiting for the registrar to do that. And as soon as that happens, we'll get your I-20 out. It should be to you by the end of the day, business day in the US. And so for the record, it's morning here. <laughs> so give me, it'll be a few hours. Okay, fantastic. Um, we do have a few more questions. We are coming to the end of this session. Um, what I will do is, Anissa, unless there's any questions that you wanted to go through um, that you can see there, I, we will take the rest of these details um, and then we can share these with you so that you can um, follow up with any further students, unless you're okay to continue with them. Um, yeah, I'm okay. Um, right now, I don't have necessarily a hard stop. I got another 10 minutes or so. Okay, fantastic. Um, so with regards to visa slots at the moment, how soon um, can students start that look to receive their updated I-20 for May? Obviously, as Anissa mentioned, if you already have received an I-20, you can use that I-20 to book your visa appointment and then request a updated I-20. So again, you know, you'll have all your details um, to go ahead and book that appointment. My suggestion is always, if you already have a visa, um, sorry, an I-20 document, book your visa appointment, and then based on that, you can request the most uh, appropriate I-20 that is going to get you into the next available intake. Because it may still be a case of, you know, in a month's time, you receive your I-20, but there's no slots until, I don't know, June, effectively. Hopefully that's not the case, but that will mean otherwise we'll end up having to issue you an I-20 for May and then issue an I-20 for August, which at that point is obviously, you know, it's a lot of time and paperwork done. So if you already have an I-20 for the January intake, Use that one to book the first available slot. Once you have that slot um, confirmed, then you have the, the booking confirmation. Share that with myself and the team and Anissa, and we'll make sure you get an updated I-20 for the intake. Anissa, anything you want to add on that? No, um, just that, you know, go ahead, like I said earlier, and book that slot. Um, you know, we will get your I-20 to you as soon as we can. Please understand it's the holidays here in the US. Right now, we're going to be out of the office until after the new year. Um, and then you know, then we have orientation and then we have a, a start week of classes. And so, you know, we've got all of these new students that are going to be here with us. And so um, just like we will do for you when you get here, we spend most of our time during that time focusing on the new students, making sure they have everything they need, making sure they get settled and they're comfortable. Um, and so we spend most of that time with that. Um, and then we, um, you know, we'll transition into the uh, season of deferment. And also my friend who just asked about his I-20, I just got your acceptance notification. So give me an hour and I'll get you your I-20. <laughs> Fantastic. So as you can see here, it's definitely been very worthwhile for you to join this session today because you've had your I-20 um, resolved and will be sent over in the next hour. Um, uh, we do have another question with regards to transfer. So obviously it mentions that if students are having issues with their current university, um, is uh, Herzing open to transfer students? I think that's a resounding yes. We're always happy to support students um, with transfers. And as we mentioned, we're 
um, you know, here to kind of guide you through that process and what the best practices are and how to make sure that you, you know, you have the best outcome with it. Um, and is there anything you would like to add to that? Yeah, so I will say that uh, in the event that you have a visa already and that you're in the U.S. or if you're still abroad and already have a visa, those are the only uh, options at this point that we would still have to admit you um, after yesterday where I admitted those final two students. Um, aside of that, you know, if, if you already have that visa, you know, getting your I-20 and your record transferred, again, as long as your I-20 is in good standing, your university cannot deny you the right to transfer to another school, but before you can transfer, you do have to have an acceptance letter. So I need to be clear that you are a transfer student because you don't want me to reissue you a new I-20. You're gonna keep your same I-20 if you transfer to Herzing. We'll get you an acceptance letter um, that you give to your university and they will then transfer your I-20 and see this record to us. It's a pretty easy process, but we've got to get you accepted first. Um, and so it, that is, again, the only um, chance at which if you're not already accepted and have an I-20 that we would still be able to move forward with your acceptance is if you are a transfer student and already have a visa. Excellent. Thank you very much, uh, Anissa. Uh, we have another question from Kuzer. K-O-U-S-E-R, uh, which mentions about he hasn't yet received his I-20, how long he should expect to wait for that. I think she is a she, actually. She, I apologize. she is the other friend that uh, of Charleston, <laughs> not friend, actually, but uh, was working with Charleston yesterday. I admitted her at the same time. I'm still pending her um, acceptance request, but I just got our other friend uh, there just a few moments ago, so her acceptance request should come through soon. Um, I would say in the next few minutes. And then those are the last two I-20s from the intake. So feel very special today that we got you guys on the call and that um, we'll be able to get your I-20s to you really soon. Fantastic. And Ronak, who mentioned about transferring to Herzing, has also asked uh, about the start date for the MBA in data analytics. Um, what, what is the official start date for the program? Obviously, orientation is Jan 4th. When it's first classes. Yeah, uh, it's, it's the 8th. So orientation is January 4th. Start date of classes is January the 8th. And last date to arrive in the U.S. is going to be January the 14th uh, to report to classes by January the 15th, which is a Monday. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, we have one final question I think we will take here um, from Adil. Uh, what if I received the passport later than Jan 15th? by getting a visa stamped on it, can I still be able to come to the university? So I think, as Anissa mentioned, we do have a, a, a last date that students will be able to arrive um, at the institution. Anissa, please, I'll hand over to you once again. Yep, so same thing. Sorry to say that 14th is a hard deadline. If you're not in the US by the 14th to attend class on Monday the 15th, um, unfortunately, you won't be able to join for this intake. However, we can quickly defer your application to, the, to May. And you'll be surprised how fast time goes. And so we'll see you here um, in May. Classes for the May intake start on May the 6th. Excellent. Um, okay, with, with that question, we will wrap up this session. Uh, again, I want to thank uh, Anissa for your uh, amazing um, support with this session. I think it was very informative and we had a really great um, Q&A session there. So. Finally, thank you to all the students that joined us today. Look, we're, we're really excited that you're going to be joining Herzing this January. Uh, if you do have any further questions, you can reach out to either myself. Uh, I know you'll have Anissa's details because that's where you would have got your information on start dates and I-20s. And I know we have a fantastic team in the background, Charleston, Mansi, Archana, Michelle, um, obviously here to support you directly should you have any questions. As Anissa did mention is... This is the festive period, so there will be times where it slight, takes slightly longer to get feedback from the institution, but there are going to be people still making sure that they go online throughout this period to make sure that you have all the support you need. If you are traveling and you haven't shared your itinerary yet, please send that over today. Um, it's vitally important that the team obviously has this so they can make sure that your uh, arrival um, is best uh, best prepared for as possible and as Anissa mentioned you know sometimes the the um the point of entry will ask to speak to Anissa and her team to confirm details and if they if they have that information beforehand they know to potentially look at an expecting call so Anissa anything you would like to, to finish up on before we close this session 
No, not necessarily. I just thank you guys all for joining. It was really great to see all these names and uh, no faces, but all these names on the webinar. Again, I, I recognize so many of you and so many of your names. Um, really excited to meet those of you who've already got a visa and, and or may get a visa in the next uh, week or so. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're just waiting for you and really the whole team is really looking forward to meeting you guys. Thank you very much, Nissa. Thank you, um, Sandy, for setting thank up this you, session. Nissa. Thank you, James. Yeah. Sure. Take care, all. Bye. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.